boom shakalaka something very concerning just happened to bitcoin and i'm not talking about the price plus the top five undervalued altcoins to buy during this dip stay tuned What's up everyone, Randall here from Crypto Love. Today's video, we are talking about something very concerning that just happened to Bitcoin. And no, we're not talking about the price, but we will talk about the price and what Bitcoin is doing right now and where it is headed compared with previous cycles. And if you hang around till the end, we will go over the top five undervalued altcoins that you should probably accumulate during this dip. Now, are we in a bear market? Eh, arguably not yet. It's only been a couple months. We'll see how this pans out. But first, before we get into the Bitcoin price, because this is pretty concerning right here, how Bitcoin has already dipped down to 78.6 fib here. Could we be having this right shoulder, which would bring Bitcoin in a head and shoulders down to negative $5,000? Before we get into that, guys, make sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell. Now, what dare say is so concerning about Bitcoin that's more concerning about this price drop. Well, my friends, in case you didn't hear, there was a ransomware hack of the Colonial Pipeline in the United States that caused massive gas shut line, shutdowns on the East Coast. Now, that was surprising, but not really surprising because ransomware is the way that everything's going in the future. But what's surprising is what happened. The ransomware hackers were paid in Bitcoin, and then the FBI recovered a huge chunk of the ransom by secretly gaining access to DarkSide's Bitcoin wallet password. Now, how, pray tell, did that happen if DarkSide had their private key? Well, it doesn't really go into too much detail, but it is somewhat concerning. Does the FBI have a back door? to reacquire any Bitcoin that they want. Did the FBI or the NSA develop Bitcoin? Are they Satoshi Nakamoto? I don't know, but let's take a look at this article because this is somewhat concerning. So, basically after the hack, Colonial told the FBI that Darkside had instructed to send 75 Bitcoin worth about 4.5 million at the time, uh, according to an affidavit, affidavit from an FBI special agent. The FBI agent then used a blockchain explorer which we all know is what that is, to figure out that DarkSide side has tried to launder the money through various Bitcoin addresses, according to the affidavit. Eventually, through the blockchain explorer, the FBI agent was able to track down 63.7 Bitcoin to a single address that had received an influx of payments on May 27th. Fortunately for the FBI, and listen up, because this is quite concerning. Fortunately for the FBI, the agency had the private key for that very address. Okay, how on earth did the agency have the private key for that address? Because if anybody knows what's going on with Bitcoin, you have a public key, which you make public, the private address you do not share with anybody because that's giving them your money. How did the FBI have that private key? Was the FBI complicit in this attack on oil pipelines? Does the FBI have a back door or is something else going on? Well, if we take a look at this article here... Uh, this is from CNBC. Hackers behind the Colonial Pipeline reportedly received $90 million in Bitcoin before shutting down. If we scroll down here, uh, on Friday, London-based blockchain analytics firm Elliptic said it had identified the Bitcoin wallet used by DarkSide to collect ransom payments from its victims. The same day, security researchers Intel 471 said DarkSide had closed down after losing access to its servers and its cryptocurrency wallets were emptied. DarkSide also blamed pressure from the U.S. according to a note attend obtained by Intel 471. So, did, potentially, did the FBI get access to their servers and were they storing the password on the servers? There's also speculation that potentially it was a Coinbase wallet and potentially the U.S. government kind of forced Coinbase to give up those addresses. So I don't exactly know how the FBI recovered this money, but it is somewhat concerning because do they have a backdoor into Bitcoin? Did they create Bitcoin? There is speculation that the NSA created Bitcoin. So... I don't have an answer for you on that one, but I would love to know what you guys think down in the comments. Now, probably what you guys are more concerned about right now is the price. The price has dropped. It went from $35,000 down to around bouncing off $32,270 to up to where we are right now, right around $33,000. Now, is this any surprise? No. Why? Well, we've been predicting it for days, this 
a solid white line wedge right here was due to break out by oh june 8th and oh it broke out on june 7th so broke out a day early now what does this mean well Unfortunately, Bitcoin actually bounced off of the 78.6 FIB, maintaining the current overall bull market structure, even though it doesn't feel like it, a couple months of a bear, but maintaining the current overall structure. This is actually a higher high than this uh, panic crash sell low that we had here, so a little bit higher low. And it actually puts us into another wedge, this dotted line wedge that we have right here that's going to break out by the end of June, June 25th. We're going to have a breakout up or down if it doesn't happen in the next day or so. So what does this mean? Well, personally, I think it means go enjoy your summer and come back to Bitcoin in like September, October, November, December. But obviously that's not what you guys want to hear because you want to be millionaires yesterday. Should have bought Dogecoin, right? Well, what does this mean? Well, we have this right shoulder structure here. And potentially, if the price comes all the way back down to this $29,000 area, people will be Basically, the sky will be falling for Bitcoin. Everybody will be saying Bitcoin price is going down. It's going to crash. It's going to negative $5,000. And while it may go down, you guys have to realize that there's kind of two strategies going on with money. There's the dumb money. I'll put myself in this as well. Who looks at short-term gains. And then there's the smart money. Who looks at the long-term gains. So, if you're dumb money and the sky is falling, you're gonna sell your Bitcoin. If you're smart money and the sky is falling, you're gonna buy Bitcoin. So you kind of have to figure out which group you wanna be in, the smart money or the dumb money, the one who's going to be buying when the sky is falling or the one who's going to be selling when the sky is falling. Because guess what? Overall, the people who buy when the sky is falling are the winners. They're the people who make the generational wealth. They're the richest people in the world. Whereas the people who sell while the sky is falling, they're basically broke and they play the lottery, stuff like that. So. Now that I've insulted all of the lottery players out there, what else is going on for Bitcoin? Well, guys, there's a lot of fear in the markets. Maybe you can't see this behind my head, so I will scroll. But right down here, the fear, crypto fear and greed index was 10 last week. That's pretty much the lowest it's been in over a year. So for a lot of you people who are new into cryptocurrency, this is the most fear you've ever experienced. Now, for other people who have been in it for quite a while, like myself, ah, we've been through a lot of fear. I was through three years of fear in cryptocurrency. Right now, nothing scares me. I know it could go to zero. If it goes to zero, bah, whatever, not likely to happen. But, I mean, three years of fear will get you used to stuff like this. Most of the time, crypto is in fear. However, for the past year, most people don't, aren't used to fear. So, let's take a look at what's really happened. Because we've had a surprising couple months with Bitcoin. Historically, historically, over the life of Bitcoin from 2010 to 2018... April and May are two of the best months for Bitcoin. They're actually the second and third best months for Bitcoin. But if we take a look here, April and May, pretty bad. I mean, April, we saw the top, but then it's just been crashing ever since then. Not historically accurate. Even if we take a look at the past three years out of this, instead of the past, or excuse me, the past four years, instead of the past eight years, because in the beginning there were some very big gains back in 2013. So just the past four years of that, April and May are still historically pretty good. June doesn't see much. July sees a bit of a peak, and then again, down until October. That's why I say go on vacation, come back in September, October, November, and things will be bright. Because if we take a look right now, we are still on course. We're still within the rainbow. And as a matter of fact, we're almost towards, we're actually in still cheap territory. As you can see right here, almost in accumulate or buy territory, that would be next. But if we take a look back in 2013 with the double bubble, okay, it came all the way back down to the still cheap before it peaked again. So potentially we have that, or potentially we have some longer term manipulation. You have to again think smart money, dumb money. Smart money thinks very long term. Think 10 years from now. There will be two more halfings from where we are right now. You think the price is going to increase? Yeah, likely. Why do you think Ray Dalio and Carl Icahn just bought in when the price dropped by 50%? Because they want to get a deal, okay? They don't care about the short-term price fluctuations. And if we take a look here, we are still following the path. As a matter of fact, we're right now in the Bitcoin Bermuda Triangle. Once we break out of that, I think when we break out of that, we'll start to see things turn around, either the price going $25,000 or $70,000. Until one of those two things happen, Bitcoin is just kind of in a sideways consolidation pattern. So, all in all, what's going to happen? I think Bitcoin is likely going to trade. If it doesn't break down today, I think it's likely going to trade sideways for the rest of this month. 
and then maybe we'll have a breakdown or maybe a breakup. But in the long term, think like smart money. In the long term, great investment, Bitcoin, and some selected cryptocurrencies. So what are those cryptocurrencies? The top five altcoins to accumulate right now. The top five undervalued altcoins. How do I pick these things? Well, I use machine learning. I use artificial intelligence. I use a system that turned $20,000 into over $5 million. What am I talking about? I'm talking about token metrics. If you haven't heard about it, I'll put a link down in the pinned comment and in the description. It'll get you 10% off. But one of my favorite things to do on token metrics to look for undervalued cryptocurrencies. Like these are the top ones that if you just wanted to buy them and hodl, these would be the ones to do it. You go to data, you go to ratings, and then you go investor yearly. And look at this, top five, forget OKB. We have Celsius, Kusama, Theta Network, Filecoin, and Polygon. That's right, Celsius, Kusama, Theta Network, Filecoin, and Polygon. If you're just looking for the top five altcoins to buy this dip, those would be my five recommendations because I believe in token metrics. It helped me pick out Matic back when it was a cent, and I'm very, very grateful for that. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell, and I'll catch you later. Peace.